Live from Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Pentaho World 2015. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Good afternoon, everybody. This is George Gilbert. I'm with Donna Perlich, Vice President of Product Marketing. We're at Pentaho World 2015. This is our wrap-up session. We come out to the events, collect signal from the noise, and we are going to be doing all signal right now with a wrap-up of, of the overall con conference. Donna, what are your top takeaways? And wow. with, a special, well, with a sort of a concentration on, on the leading edge customers and what they've been doing. Yeah, well it's been uh, quite a, a two and a half days here. And um, you know, I think the big takeaway is looking at the customers that we have. You know, you've had, we've had the pleasure of having a number of them on the cube with you. So, you know, thinking about, you know, somebody like EDO and folks that have been around a long time and then, you know, FINRA's amazing keynote where they're talking about processing 75 billion tra transactions a day. So just kind of the, the scale and the history of our customers and then seeing them all here and having everybody sort of engaging with each other and it's been, it's been tremendous. It's been just great. You know, uh, when you touch on that 75 billion uh, transactions a day, it, it's another theme that sort of comes out of the all the sort of product announcements, which is, you know, enterprise scale. It's not, it's no longer just features because we've got to push the envelope on features. It's now people in production at scale. Yeah. Um, and that's been very clear. And uh, it was um, Chris Zekin who, you know, was very articulate in saying, we're not making any compromises in terms of putting in new features at the expense of, you know, being in production at scale. And, uh, but the other theme that, that came out in a lot of the customer talks and that definitely came out um, both in his interview here and his keynote was that the end-to-end -end capability you know, of the yep. platform. Yep. We're going to you know, take the data, we're going to blend it, we're going to make it available for analysis and you know, at the point of embed where it's in, uh, sort of integrated with yep. the application. Yep. Very, very powerful. Yeah. And, you know, we haven't really seen that from anyone else. Yeah, so I mean, I think that, you know, one of the things that we realized is that's so important going forward. And yeah. it sounds like maybe the things that aren't um, as, you know, sort of flashy, but honestly, the success we've had and the customers we've had, it's absolutely the thing that we're going to invest in because we know that these data pipelines are becoming even more important to their businesses, and we've got to make some of that emerging tech you know, that we interfaced with and our interfaces with that really, really reliable and simpler. And honestly, that's where we're going to have an even bigger advantage over time. You know, right. most of the time it's, you know, you think about all the new sort of bells and whistles, but we understand that being able to really solidify that pipeline, that data pipeline, and make it enterprise grade, right. that's a you know, huge win for our customers. And, and it's interesting to hear you talk about that because it aligns with our our, um, what our learnings about the market from our discussions with customers, which is, you know, we're, we're not throwing away 50 years of systems of record. Right, right. What we're doing is modernizing them. Yep. And t to modernize them, we're putting on analytic data pipelines. Yep. And Hadoop helps with that because it's this, you know, it starts with the data lake and it starts with these very new and more advanced sort of data processing engines for handling data at scale and data with less structure. But what we're seeing with Hadoop is the vendors have this need to differentiate. And so the Hadoop distributions are beginning to fork mm -hmm. and they're not all that interchangeable anymore. But what we are seeing is that Pentaho can put that analytic data pipeline on top of them and make them look alike. The same. Yes. Or, or yeah. according to the requirements of the customer. So one of the things yeah. that's important, I think, for us is we know that as the distributions evolve and they innovate, there's things that customers are demanding, right? That are, you know, security is obviously a big one. Right. And so to us, it's we really want our customer to choose the right distro. What we want them to have, though, is the flexibility to do that. And then even beyond, right? Because we know these deployments are going to grow. They may add another Hadoop cluster somewhere else, different, different use case. So we've got that adaptive big data layer that we've talked about running along that pipeline, which gives the customer that flexibility. The other piece is really, um, 
if you think about some of the capabilities you put in for lineage and monitoring, all of those things we've made so that customers can say, hey, this is what I have in my environment. You don't have to reinvent the wheel for me. You don't have to create a new monitoring system. Just plug right. in the one you have. And so right. when you were talking about those systems of records going away, one of the things that we see is they're absolutely not going away. And in fact, we need to accommodate them being there. Right, we right. need to make sure that as we think about that analytic data pipeline, it's not just the new sources, it's what our customers have in place already. This is the, let's make those systems of record, you know, more valuable. Exactly, Not, not exactly. rip and replace. Absolutely, well, yeah. You know, what we used to call the heart and lung transplant. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, any customer stories that stood out for you, you know, people who are, doing interesting things, whether internet of things, or mm -hmm. thinking about them, yeah. or who are now in production and pushing the envelope you know, with, with what's coming out six imminently, but five three and five four this year. Yeah, well I think um, you know, one that just comes to mind is you know, what CERN is doing. I know you spoke to them earlier today, but just the fact that they're running their entire organization, this lab of you know, 15,000 people from all over the world, they've got to manage it like right. really a tiny city. And they're doing that with Pentaho and they're doing some special things in terms of the, the data layers in Pentaho. And they have that ability, right? So even though in the beginning it may start out with we're addressing your reporting, Long term, you know, this is rolling out to 15,000 people, and plus, you know, just the absolute fascination with CERN that everybody has, right? right. That's a you know, great but organization. So I don't know if they found the Higgs boson, but if they haven't, <laughs> maybe it'll come up. It'll come up in a Pentaho kind of analytic yeah. model. Well, I want to be clear that we're not uh, claiming that's going to yeah. happen via Pentaho. So, um, so that would be one, and then I think. Um, you know, uh, some of the other ones I know, like uh, IMS, right? So the telematics, right? That's oh, the really that cool amazing, stuff, you know, yeah. and the ability to take that driver sensor information and put that together with, you know, usage information on, um, on drivers and start to give people, you know, the benefit of you're a really good driver and we can tell that. So we're going to treat you that way. <coughs> and yeah, what was fascinating was he wasn't even talking so much about the technology. He was saying, what can we do with that data? Absolutely. As you were saying, yeah. you know, we can now do um, oh. pr tier tiered pricing. Yeah. yeah. And you know, to our to our astonishment, he wasn't saying bad drivers pay more. Yeah. It's just that good drivers pay less because it'll help good drivers drive better. Yep. And then he went on to say, um, they're even uh, thinking about how can we advise drivers. You know, not just mm -hmm. track them. You know, yeah. but advise where you know to route around. Uh, uh, say uh, storm storm damaged areas or bad neighborhoods or whatever yeah, yeah. that and it becomes pre yeah. prescriptive. It, well, I was going to say, and it's really a great tie into you know one of the really nice keynotes I thought was Mike Galtieri from Forrester, you yeah. know, and how he talked about this celebrity customer and how every customer is going to need to feel like that, and as an organization, you're going to need to. The expectation will be that you will treat your customers that way, and I think IMS is a really good example of, you could look at that as a, a safety, you know, uh, initially something to do with safety. Secondly, right. then you put the context of the insurance data around it and it's, oh wow, we can give our best customers a discount. Right. But as you start to expand that, as you were saying, my customer feels like, wow, they, they know me and they're, they're rewarding me for being a good customer. That my insurance company of all things treats me yes. as it, with a concierge. <laughs> yeah, exactly, concierge uh, yes. insurance, yeah. All right, at that, we're going to have to break it off. Uh, this is George Gilbert with Donna Perlich, Vice President of Product Marketing, and we are signing off from Pentaho World 2015. We will be back next year, bigger and better than ever, and so will Pentaho. With that, good night.